Hello there. The European Union says it's getting to the end of the road over the Northern Ireland Protocol. As per usual, please like, subscribe and comment below. And when subscribing, please do press that little bell, but also select the All option or you won't get any notifications when I publish a new video. The EU has boxed itself into a corner by refusing to hold realistic talks on the Northern Ireland Protocol that would lead to the Belfast Agreement being properly respected in all its facets. And the Eurocrats then feign surprise when the UK's post-Brexit negotiator, Lord David Frost, keeps leaning on them for more. And now we have the Irish Foreign Minister Simon Coveney saying that Lord Frost is rejecting what he calls new, far-reaching EU proposals before he's even seen them. Well, if the Brussels proposals insist on keeping the European Court of Justice as the final arbiter and offering minor word changes, then the UK needs to keep on needling the European Union. And guess what? We will. Now, a few days ago, Simon Coveney tweeted, EU is preparing far-reaching proposals to respond positively to genuine concerns in Northern Ireland on implementation of the protocol. Once again, EU are showing that we are listening and responding with real solutions within the confines of the UK-EU agreed protocol. And I would ask, what confines? There are no confines. Paragraph 8 of Article 13 of the Protocol itself quite clearly says that everything in the Protocol is up for renegotiation and that the Protocol could in fact be negotiated completely away. There are no confines. Any subsequent agreement between the Union and the United Kingdom shall indicate the parts of this Protocol which it supersedes. Once a subsequent agreement between the Union and the United Kingdom becomes applicable after the entry into force of the withdrawal agreement, this protocol shall then, from the date of application of such subsequent agreement and in accordance with the provisions of that agreement setting out the effect of that agreement on this protocol, not apply or shall cease to apply, as the case may be, in whole or in part. So there you have it. The protocol can be completely changed, amended, removed, replaced, whatever it takes, including removing the European Court of Justice as final arbiter, which the EU claim cannot be changed. Well, it can. Everything can. And what has the EU got against having independent oversight, something the UK wants to put in place? Why do they insist on having their ECJ in charge? Well, I think we all know the answer to that one, don't we? And that means the UK can keep pressing as much as it likes to get things amended and made to work better. And believe it or not, if it works well for the UK as well as the EU, then everything goes much more smoothly and the people are happy. You know, those soft, squeezy things that politicians forget about. But the EU is ignoring that part of the protocol that allows changes to be made. Brussels is doing what Brussels always does. One-dimensional, single-market think. And it is still in punish Brexit UK mode too. While the Republic of Ireland uses it as a means of furthering their ambitions of forcing a united Ireland. But I detect a certain growing level of tetchiness on the EU side as time goes on. And that might turn into grumpiness after Lord Frost gives his speech tomorrow. And Lord Frost's opposite number in Brussels, Vice President Maros Sefcovic, recently told the Institute of International and European Affairs that the protocol would not be changed. The dogmatic EU in action. The single market at all costs, etc. 
So Simon Coveney and Maros Sefcevic appear to have been engaged in a bit of selective reading of the protocol by ignoring the bits of the protocol that disagree with their single market mantra. Now one bit of the protocol that is quite narrow in scope and limits the actions of either side in trying to weaponise the protocol is good old Article 16. The EU in cahoots with Dublin, however, has done its level best to separate Great Britain from Northern Ireland, especially by forcing the diversion of trade, culminating in the UK being unable to control its own internal market. Then there's the growing unrest amongst the unionist community and the economic impact it's having on UK companies trying to get their goods into their own outlets in Northern Ireland. And Article 16 says that if any one of economic, societal or diversion of trade problems arise because of the way the protocol is being implemented, then Article 16 can be used by the aggrieved party to remedy the problems. And Article 16 is an integral part of the protocol that the EU signed up to. Never forget that. So in ignoring those two parts as well as paragraph 1 of Article 1 where it talks about the Belfast Agreement saying this protocol is without prejudice to the provisions of the 1998 agreement in respect of the constitutional status of Northern Ireland and the principle of consent which provides that any change in that status can only be made with the consent of a majority of its people. And the protocol is not respecting that because the people of Northern Ireland are now being treated differently than they were before its imposition. And Article 1 goes on to say that the protocol is there to protect the Belfast Agreement in all its dimensions. And that includes UK territorial integrity and not interfering with the connection of the people of Northern Ireland with Great Britain. But Brussels is determined to do anything but that and insists on inserting wedges at all points. And they wonder why the UK is on the verge of pulling the plug. Anyway, the EU says it's now at the end of its tether over this, and there are fears that this could escalate into a full-blown trade war next year. But has the EU thought this through? The UK could trigger Article 16 and limit its actions to address the worst of the EU administrative excesses and the EU would be forced to do two things. The first would be to order its tame ECJ judges to interpret the protocol against the UK, and also to impose a border of its own across the island of Ireland, or else it would be proving it doesn't need a border at all. And the UK can just stand back and refuse to get involved, saying it's the choice of Brussels and Dublin. They'll try to blame the UK, of course, but would they really risk erecting border checkpoints, knowing what the consequences could be? Really? And the responses the EU makes to anything the UK does do should, according to the protocol, be proportionate. If they are obeying the protocol, that is. But I doubt anything they do will be proportionate. They're not using the protocol in a proportionate manner right now, are they? Anyway, the UK is finding ways to get round this trade squabble. But before I get onto that, I just want to say a massive thank you to all my super thanks, Patreon and PayPal supporters, as well as those that do buy a mug with my mug on it. Links in the descriptions box below. You really do help me keep this channel going. Now, the European Union is used to being just about the only source of goods like fresh fruit and veg that the UK has got, even if it is freighted by road direct from outside the EU. But right now, a ship from Morocco loaded with 100 freights of fruit and veg is on its way direct to Poole, completely bypassing the European Union. And in the process, it halved the travelling time for its cargo from six days to three days and made the trip greener too, and also cut the risk of French fishing vessel blockades to zero. The Bournemouth Echo says there'd be one ship a week on this Brexit-busting route that they've been working on for two years. 
It's a small start, but let's hope the UK can get a lot more of this going in the near future. We've already seen what having all of your eggs in one basket can lead to, as I pointed out in this morning's video on UK energy security. So what's your opinion on renegotiating the protocol? Please like and comment below.